More than 50,000 young people lost their lives in London last year to knife crime. Too many mothers are burying their children when it should be the other way around. Too many of our young people are not fulfilling their potential due to factors like knife crime and other social vices. Today with us in the studio, we have the CEO and founder of an organization that is passionate and committed and trying to do everything to stop this problem. The CEO of Action Family Network, Martin Asamoa. This brother is originally from Ghana. He has been a social worker in the UK with more than 15 years experience as a social worker and a social care worker. Martin Asamoa is one of the few success stories of immigrants coming to this country with nothing and rising and making social economic contribution to this society. Brother Martin, we are very, very proud of you. Thank you so much for coming to speak to us at the Launch Club. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you. So, Martin, can you just tell us how you, your journey into social work, how did it start? Ah, uh, Chief, I uh, did back 2005. Actually, it was the day unfortunate situation happened when uh, there was some issue in London, uh, the 77. Yeah. Yes. I found myself at Heathrow Airport in the UK. That's where life brought me here. Uh, the rest is a story. And in order for me to make active contribution to the society and also develop my career, I started working with a number of young people. So I had a job as a young people's mentor with uh, the uh, Youth Offending, uh, Offending Institute. Okay. Yes, Young Offenders Institute, yes. Okay. And then uh, after that, after some time, I thought, you know what? I think I can make better contribution if I develop a professional career in this. So I went back to uni after many years after studying, I had to go back to uni to uh, study social work. And that's where my journey started to become a social worker. Okay, so when did you qualify as a social worker? I qualified as a social worker in 2011, but I started practicing actively as a social worker in 2013. What aspect of social work do you work in? I'm a, currently I'm an advanced social work practitioner. My social work journey, throughout my social work journey, has been with child protection and safeguarding. I have a lot of experience in working with young people with challenging behaviors. I act as a mentor. Uh, I also have a lot of experience in working in specialist residential homes. Uh, assessing young people who have uh, different challenging behaviors and to make a decision whether it can be safe for them to return home to their parents, that's rehabilitation in professional terms, or whether they should remain in residential care or long-term uh, fostering. So a lot of people get confused between care worker and social work. Can you please tell our audience what is the difference? What does your job entail on a day-to-day -day basis? My job involves, my, uh, as a social safeguarding or child protection social worker, it involves taking referrals from schools and other organizations, the GPs, health visitors, and even from the public, and then constantly making assessments making decision risk assessment and in order to safeguard children from harm. So as a safeguarding social worker or child protection social worker, 
the main day to day aspect of the job is making assess assessments and decisions in order to make an informed decision to safeguard children and vulnerable children from harm and placing them at a place of safety. So that place of safety can be removing a child from their parents' place, going to court and placing them in a residential foster care, a safe place, yeah? That's correct. Okay. So when an assessment informs a decision that the child will be or is at a risk of significant harm, that means it will trigger a decision to make a decision. What that decision will mean is that you remove that child from that place of immediate risk of harm to a place of safety. I was reading in the news recently that a lot of immigrants, their children end up in care of the local authority. Their children have, have been removed from their care. So what do you think for people watching this program, recent arrivals in the UK, what do you think they need to be aware of to prevent having the state intervene in their family life? This is a very important point, uh, Chief. So for the new arrivals, immigrants, we understand that there are significant cultural differences from what we know in terms of parenting or our practices in terms of parenting and what is done here in the UK because the laws and the, par uh, the parenting practices are completely different. So it is very important for the new arrivals, the parents who have just arrived in the country to understand these principles and get themselves used to how the system operates here. Yes, there are some times where due to lack of cultural competent practice, decisions have been made to remove children or uh, for social services to intervene in families' lives due to the lack of cultural knowledge, culturally competent knowledge in the uh, minority uh, communities. But at the same time, there are also many examples where parents who have just arrived in the country due to the, uh, excuse me to use the word, ignorant about uh, the systems here, they found themselves in the wrong side of the system and they end up having their children removed and placed into care. So what if for someone who is watching this program now, who's been in the UK, uh, what do they need to be aware of to prevent that happening to them? The first thing I would want to say is, here in the UK, we don't beat children. We don't smack children. This is one of the many refer reasons for social care interventions in the families of minority background, especially African families. Chief, me and you will testify because we are born and brought up in Africa that our parents' response to um, pushing boundaries is what? Physical chastisement, smacking, hitting at the bum. Unfortunately, it's not allowed here in the UK. And this has led to, unfortunately, many, many young people or children being removed from their parents as a result of this. And other reasons why minority families uh, come into the attention of social services include domestic violence. Uh, the fathers, unfortunately, thinking that they have the right to use physical violence to settle score with their wives and partners. And uh, unfortunately, sometimes it is in front of uh, the children, exposing so children to uh, violent, physical violence. So what we are saying is that any physical violence and a shouting, fighting in front of your children, that is classed as a risk to the children. And as a result, the state has a duty to intervene. 
Yes. So if you do not want the state to intervene in your life, make sure you do not expose your children to shouting, fighting, anything that will put them at risk, okay? Yes, and Chief, one other thing also, and this is very unique and specific to the challenges that the new arrivals face. That's issue of childcare, because of the many challenges that the new arrival families face, navigating having to go to work and child care is very difficult and sometimes we do a lot of unsociable hours and we are compared as a result to leave our children at home unsupervised without the care of any appropriate adult and go to work so what we are saying is an appropriate adult is that anyone below the age of 18 is not still class as a child therefore you cannot leave your children and with a 12 years old child for instance and go to work and say oh he, he or she is big enough to look after their siblings you know if you do that in your home country you may get away with it but if you do that in the UK, that is classed as neglect. You're neglecting your children. That is what is classed as, right? It is neglect. And also, apart from having that issue of neglect, neglecting them, you can also be culpable of criminal investigation, criminal negligence, negligence, negligence yeah. leaving children unsupervised. And then should something happens to them, if nothing happens to them, uh, you may uh, get away with only social services intervention. However, if something should happen to any of these children, you will be criminally investigated and you may be convicted for criminal neglig negligence of a child. Good. So, you are the CEO of Action Family Network, as I said before. At what stage did you set up Action Family Network? So Ashen Family Network has been a dream child uh, for some time now. So uh, before the COVID, I, myself and few others were helping the community, especially the uh, community who were disproportionately affected by uh, the COVID, the lockdown. And let me use a few seconds of your time to explain this also. That's why it's so important for I, we as community to understand the impact that uh, some of these uh, unforeseeable circumstances can have on us. So during the COVID, there were lockdown. And then all of a sudden, people who have no recourse to public fund in the UK, they are legally residents in the UK, but they had no recourse to public fund. And during the lockdown, people were asked to stay at home and not going to work. So the government ended up paying them through FARO scheme. But people who fell within that category, most of them were not entitled to any government intervention in terms of the funding, okay? So we ended up having families from the immigration background who were not, not citizens, but they were legally residents in the UK, but they were not entitled to any benefits. That is the unintended consequences of harsh and hostile immigration world policies. So some of us came together, started helping, contributing uh, to help some of these families, uh, personal level, on a personal level. And that created an awareness for me to, you know what? I've seen a lot through my professional career and personally that the community need support and that support should come from within. And as a result, that gave birth to the establishment of Action Family Network to help and put something back to the community. For someone who doesn't understand what Action Family Network is, can you please be straight to the point, what does Action Family Network, what does the organization stand for? Action Family Network is an integrated service. We are a body of organization. It's a community interest company. Our 
aim is to help families, children, young people, and the community to help them realize their full potentials, especially families that are facing challenges, including domestic violence abuse, mental health issues, and any other challenges. Okay, so I understand you've got a program coming up in a few months time. That's correct. What is this program about? So, Action Family Network, we have different set of programs. But because of time, we may not have time to go through everything. But one of our flagship programs is called Impact and Legacy Youth Leadership Program. This program is developed and established for young people between the ages of 12 and 18 year old. Okay, so what would these young people between the age of 12 to 18, what would they benefit from this program? So this program is to, uh, we, we have established to help young people to break through barriers. And if I talk of barriers, we have already mentioned a lot of them, the criminal justice system, knife crime, mental health, bullying, uh, truancy, many challenges that a number of young people face uh, in their lives. We offer every young person who comes to the program the opportunity to succeed in their lives. We offer first class level of training and mentorship in order for them to do that. We have a strong vision for Ashen Family Network. Our vision is to inspire and equip young people by giving them the tools, the strategies, and first and foremost, the blueprint to succeed in their lives. So can you give me a picture of the kind of young people that would fit the profile for your criteria? So we are inclusive organization. Okay, I'm just talking, I'm not talking about background, I'm talking about is a young person that has a problem with education, challenging behavior, what kind of... So, we are open to all, but okay. for young people who have unique challenges, challenging behaviors, we offer as a group or one-to-one -one, uh, mentoring sessions. But this particular program is open to every young person between the ages of 12 and 18 years old. Okay, for a parent who is watching now, who come, who's coming across this video for the first time, who would want to consider whether this program would benefit their child, can you tell them why this program would benefit their child? Thank you very much. The most important thing is that young people face a lot of challenges and there are not many services, statutory services available there to support them or help them address these challenges. Let's talk about mental health, for example. Right now, if you have, if your child has mental health issues and would need the service of CAMS, for example, that is the Children and Adolescent Mental Health Services, it will take not less than, that's nationally, in yeah. the UK and uh, England and Wales, it will take not less than 12 to 18 months yeah. for the child to even be seen by CAMS professional. So imagine if your child have, is going through mental health issues and statistically, children, especially children from minority background, experience enormous mental health issues. Yeah. So if there are not enough or adequate statutory services available, what can we do individually and as a community to help address that and that's why a project like this is so important so we help young people not only to talk to them about their mental health but we create a platform for them to also a platform a space for them to openly talk about issues that affect them in terms of their mental health we also teach them about leadership qualities, leadership skills. We have different set of modules. So if you want me to go through the uh, 
summary, the, summary. the summary of the modules. Okay. So the first, it's a 12 week program. Yeah. The first six weeks is every Saturday for two hours. We meet with the young people to go through a module. So we talk about modules such as understanding the issues that affects uh, young people. We talk about youth violence and crime prevention. You understand that county line is a cancer, social cancer across the country. It go, it's going on in the church. Youth, people in the church are part of county lines. The people are getting, uh, the, 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 the leaders in this uh, county lines are getting smarter in their recruitment. So your children will be the next to be recruited into county lines. We talk about county lines, how young people can prevent themselves from being recruited or becoming part of a gang. We talk about career development and entrepreneurship skills. We talk about financial education and most importantly, generational wealth creation. Chief, one important thing, this is a new addition to our modules. That is understanding the application of artificial intelligence and coding, okay? Why is it so important for us to add this to our module for this cohort? We know that right now, if you're watching me, if we Google jobs that are no longer going to be in existence in the next five, 10 years, you'll be shocked. The shock of your life will include jobs that right now, your children, you're preparing your children that this is their, the job that they want to do in future. These are specially skilled jobs such as accountancy, legal, that's lawyers, solicitors. Some of these jobs are no longer going to be in existence in the next five, 10 years. When we started this program uh, in the first module, when we were talking about this, we were talking about five, 10 years. At that time, chat GTP, for example, hasn't come to effect that yet. Now, chat GTP is able to replace editorial journalist, journalist jobs. You understand? So the thinking behind this is that right now, you see, the current education system is a production engine for a professional outcome. So we are prepared, the education system right now that we, our children are going through is preparing children as a production engine for a professional outcome and that outcome is no longer going to be in existence in the next few years. So what you're basically doing is that some of those professions that you know, these children that are going to formal education, the jobs that may not be there and they're already being taught this thing, you're already preparing them to start thinking outside the box. Thank you, that's exactly what we're doing because the universities are actually doing catch up. I presented the module to one professor who helped me to develop this concept. The professor looked at me, he said, Martin, you are making me think again. And how do parents refer for this program? So if you're a parent and you want your young person to be part of this program, you need to go to our website and access our application form through the online application. Uh, it will take less than two minutes to complete the online application. One of our staff will contact you to arrange an interview to make sure that your child is the right candidate for this program because we want the right young people to participate in the program. We want young people who want to be part of this program, not that the parents want them to be part of it. That's why we do the interviewing. And how much is it going to cost them? Do you want to know this, Chief? Yeah, please. Are you sure? Yeah. The good news is that this course is very, very free of charge. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. So how would parents that want to register their children, how would they contact you? So our contact details will be right at the end of this uh, podcast. Okay. But if you want to contact us, you can email us via 
I'm going to put your email and your contact details in the uh, uh, this uh, video. They will see the email and the contact details. There. Thank you. Okay. So uh, you've heard from man from heard from direct directly from Martin. This service for children navigating a world where they are minority, they often face a lot of challenges. And some of these challenges, only the child that is going through the challenges understands what they are going through. A program like this will provide free mentorship. Everybody needs a mentor in life. So give your children the tools to be able to make positive contribution to society, the tools to help them understand their identity, economic empowerment. This is a unique opportunity that is not going to cost you anything and your children can take part in this program online. Is that correct? So we have two main ways of uh, accessing the program. Is, it, is, it, is that through online, Zoom or face to face? So if you are able to access the program physically, we are based in Coventry in West Midlands. So young people and children within West Midlands are able to come to our premises in Coventry. Those who are outside West Midlands and afar, they access the program through Zoom. We only uh, share the Zoom link uh, during the program and then the children can join. Okay, Martin. Before we end this podcast, is there anything that you would like to tell any parent who is watching this podcast who is still undecided on why they should consider sending their children? Just make it 30 seconds, please. Thank you very much. This is the unique opportunity for you as a parent for you to enroll your child into this unique mentorship and leadership program we teach young people about modules and curriculum that they will never access in the mainstream education unless your child go to private school this is an opportunity and this is the first and the last time this is the last cohort that the program is going to be delivered free the next cohort is going to be delivered with a fee so this is the last opportunity for you to enroll we are starting the next cohort in February, we are at the moment closing our registration uh, application. So this is opportunity, last chance for you to register and we will interview a young person or children for him or her to be part of this important and unique program. Thank you very much. Martin, we will always invite you back to come and speak to us because what you're doing, you're, it aligns with our vision, which is progress and economic empowerment of our people, especially people from marginalized community. We're very proud of you. We will always be there for you. Anytime you want any, you want to speak to us, feel free to reach out to us. Thank you so much for all you're doing. You're welcome, Chief. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, thank you, those guys that have joined us on Facebook. Thank you. And uh, continue to follow Launch Club on the different social media platform. Uh, our mission is the progress and economic empowerment of our people. God bless.